I saw a video of you recently um, saying that you only focusing on black issues yes. before any other race. Yes. Why is that? Because our group are the most maligned. We're the most ignored. Historically, we've been the most oppressed. And nobody speaks for black people. We speak for everybody, diluting our power and diluting the focus. You see, I want to speak for my people because my people never gets enough attention. It's not racism against nobody else. I want justice for the Ukrainian people. I want justice for the Palestinians. I want justice for every group that's being oppressed. But guess what? My people never get the attention shown on their issues like other groups do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be one person who marries myself, commits myself to only focusing on African issues. Are people upset with you because you're not taking or advocating for the Palestinians? Of course they are. First of all, non-African groups expect us to fight for them because we always do. People can always take us for granted because we're always championing someone else's cause besides our own. So yes, they do, right? But at the same token, I just reiterate my position. I want what's best for you. But to waste a minute helping you means that I'm taking a minute from my own people. Mm. How am I going to focus on Palestine? Look what's been going on in Haiti. Way worse than Palestine, but we just going to forget about Haiti and run to Palestine? What about the Ethiopian situation? We just going to ignore that? The Somali situation. Look at the Congolese situation. Haiti and Congo are the two greatest humanitarian crises in the world. They get almost no attention, but Palestine does. I hope Palestine get justice. I hope they get all that was due to them. But as long as there's Congolese catching hell, getting no attention, as long as there's Haitians catching hell, getting no attention, as long as there's Ethiopians and Somalis catching hell, getting no attention, with all due respect, I want what's best for you. But I can't take my eyes off my people's pain to put it on yours because you would never take your eyes off your people's pain to put it on mine. Hmm. So while, while we're speaking about it, what are some of the conflicts that are happening in these countries? Because to be honest, when it comes to a PR job, the Palestinian cause has done the best when it comes like everywhere I go, whether it's here or Dubai, I see Palestinian colors. I mm -hmm. see Palestinian flags. Mm -hmm. I never hear about what's happening in, Con in Congo. Because I it's way worse and they don't have any infrastructure. At least the Palestinians through their Arab neighbors and extended family, they do have an in infrastructure to get the word out. Like Al Jazeera, which I believe is an Arab controlled network, mm -hmm. they can get that out. We tend not to have that. And when we do have it, it's owned by black bourgeoisies who don't want to scratch the power structure the wrong way. But you see in the Congo, and by the way, the Congo and Haiti, the reason why those are the two longest going and most disastrous uh, human rights situations is because iridium in Haiti. Iridium is a mineral you need for atomic weaponry. It's a mineral that's so strong it doesn't melt under the hottest temperature. Mm -hmm. So America doesn't want Haiti selling their iridium to anybody else in the world. That's why they keep Haiti backwards because Haiti is one of the top producers of iridium on the planet. And for the Congo, it goes without saying. The Congo has the purest cobalt in the world. Excuse me, coltan. Okay, coltan is a mineral that they make from titanium and cobalt, I believe. But it's a, it's a very precious mineral that you need for every electromagnetic device. You need it for the cell phone, the helicopter, the walkie-talkie, the radio. There would be no technological age without that coltan. Guess who has the purest coltan? Congo. They also got diamonds. They got gold. They got oil. The Congo is the richest piece of land on the face of the earth per capita. It's the real Wakanda. <laughs> it's the real Wakanda. That's what they, when they, vibranium was the coltan. The whole Wakanda thing was metaphorical for what's going on in the Congo. But guess what? American corporate interests manipulate both. They're manipulating the war and the hunger and the starvation and the medical situation and the AIDS crisis in the Congo. And the same thing in Haiti. Wherever black people have essential minerals and crucial ingredients for war or industry, America sows dissension in civil strife. Mm. America intentionally, through her military and her business agents, keep wealthy African countries in turmoil so they can never organize themselves enough to become a relevant player on the world stage. They want no African nation to be a relevant player on the world stage. And that's unfortunate because look, when you're talking about the PR, uh, what's happening in, in Palestine, mm -hmm. The Palestinians have the Arab nations as the 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 advocates on their behalf. Yes, they do. Now, for the Africans, we don't have a powerful or big enough mm. structure to nah. be able to speak. We up. have and the African we... Union, but the problem with the African Union is nearly every member state of the African Union 
is in bed with a European country. You either in bed with the UK, you in bed with Belgium, you in bed with France, you in bed with uh, Amsterdam, you're in bed with Washington, DC. You see. So whereas in the Arab situation, they have a little bit more autonomy because they didn't go through the colonization that we did. In the African situation, all these nations are beholden to a white power. Mm -hmm. And and if if one of the Arab nations had those same minerals that, that Africa did, does they would have probably they, been targeted for colonization a long time ago. Um, but I mean, it was because of Africa's wealth that they chose us. Mm. Africa is the only continent that, if it controlled its own resources, it could live self sufficiently without nobody else. You feel me? If mm. we control what was in Africa, we wouldn't need nothing else. There's nothing in America Africa needs. Minerally speaking, there's nothing in South America. You understand? Africa could be self contained. And that's why America can never let us stand up on our own two feet. They call it aid. They're always giving Africa aid. It's not aid. It's sabotage. Mm -hmm. Because whenever they give Africa aid, they require three things. You know what they require? Number one, family planning strategies, LGBT and transgenderism. If you don't That's push, why they want Uganda to yes, be LGBT. Yes, yes. If you don't push LGBT and transgenderism, we're not giving you no money. Well, what money got to do with gay sex? Because <laughs> I need to pollute the minds of your children so they stop reproducing themselves. Because the white man has a long-term 500-year plan to one day rid the world of all black people so white people can leave Europe and come live in Africa. Hmm. They want to depopulate Africa, which I don't think could ever happen, but they could damn sure make it very uncomfortable for us. You see that. Mm -hmm. That's why they want the LGBTQ and the transgenders there, right? So that's number one, family planning. And also you have Planned Parenthood International in Africa paying for women to get hysterectomies and abortions for free. Mm. Uh -huh. I and, was in South Africa. They, they also gave them six billion dollars between 1990 and 2000. Yeah, yeah. Six billion dollars worth of contraceptives. Absolutely, absolutely. Mostly birth control and intra and, and implants, messing the women's hormones up, giving them cancer and everything else. Oh, they all in Africa trying to reduce it. But again, we can reproduce so easily, they having trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So number one is family planning. Number two, free market. Mm -hmm. Free market. That means what? You live in a country that makes its own salt, right? Senegal got its own salt. So you don't want no salt company coming into Senegal. Why? Because we have our own salt, so we need to keep an industry of our own so we can have jobs and money for our people. You know what America says? I give you this $1 million. You can't protect none of your industries. Morton salt and every other salt could come. You in Nigeria, you got your own chicken farm, right? You don't want nobody selling chicken. No, no, no. Purdue chicken, uh, Island Farm chicken. What they do is they sabotage your indigenous markets to make you dependent on the white man. So countries that grow tea importing somebody else's tea. Country that got their own chickens importing somebody else's chicken. Somebody make their own oil importing somebody else's oil. This is what America does all in the name of what aid. So is the aid really helping Africa? No, it's destroying you. And the last thing they do is the interest rate. I'm going to give you a million dollars, but guess what the interest rate is? A thousand percent. You're never paying me off. Then you have control over Do you know money. most African countries? have only been financing the interest on the debt. They haven't even touched the debt. They're literally financing the interest. They ain't even touched the principal yet. They set it up like this. So why do I want a loan if you're charging me 1,000% interest? I can't pay it back. You're making me push gay sex on all of my children. I can't protect any of my indigenous markets, which means I'm going to be importing your crap when I should be making my own. How is that helping us? And that's why the more aid Africa gets, the worse off Africa becomes. What they say, give a man a fish you eat for a day. Teach a man a fish, he eat for a lifetime. They giving Africa a fish. They're not teaching them how. Mm. That's powerful. And bro. Africa don't even need to be taught. They just need to be left the hell alone to do for themselves. The white man will not leave Africa alone to do for herself because white supremacy depends on a subservient Africa. As Africa stands, white power structure fall. That's why they killed Gaddafi. Because Gaddafi was going to work with the sub-Saharan African presidents to create a Central African bank backed by the wealth of Africa. Do you know how wealthy an African currency would be backed by the resources of the richest continent on earth? It would take all the power from the U.S. It would take, it would take the power from the world. Hmm. That's why Gaddafi had to die. Why you ain't seen another African leader come forward to try to pick up where he left off? Mm -hmm. They're afraid of assassination. Well, well what about the uh, leader of Burkina Faso? Ibrahim Trahore, I think he's probably the greatest Pan-Africanist alive right now because he's doing the work, not just talking. Uh, I wish him well. I hope one day I can meet him. I hope he's sincere. I believe he is. And it's not just him. You also got the other uh, presidents right around in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, Niger. Niger. Uh, uh, who else you got? Burkina Faso. Niger. Uh, 
Kwame Nsegu Toure, Guinea, Guinea, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, and it's, and I think it's another one. And they started their own little African federation. My only concern is everybody in that thing incorruptible. Because the one thing you need to be a leader, not only courage and integrity, you must be uncorruptible. Malcolm was incorruptible. Garvey was incorruptible. Can you follow me? If you don't have incorruptibility, they're going to tempt you with money, tempt you with women, tempt you with death. You got to be incorruptible. I hope they are. If they are, they can do something great for Africa. But if there's one weak link in that chain, it's going to fall. I hope they are real. And I hope Ibrahim Jehore is really keeping a close grip on who he has around him because, you know, they, they keep trying to get him because mm -hmm. France is angry. Yeah. French is pissed off. Yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, and um, I'm hoping that the ancestors keep him protected. Yeah.